But one thing that, as I said, really shocked me about this water out thing is it confirmed a fear that I had that is in the, uh, this document. I don't know if you've read it, Minister. <clears throat> Have you read this Irish water document? General conditions for a water and wastewater uh, agreement. Uh, these are the conditions that every customer of Irish Water, once they sign up to, is signing up to. They're committed to. They probably, most of them, won't have read it, but it's a document on their uh, website, and these are the conditions of uh, being an Irish Water customer, so called. And in the uh, obligations of the customer, on page 17, uh, section 197, it says the following. <clears throat> The customer shall not allow the discharge of rainwater runoff from roofs, paved areas or other surfaces into any sewer, except as may otherwise be agreed in advance with Irish water in writing. Now, what's that about? What is that about? Why would Irish water require a written agreement and everybody who is an Irish water customer We'll be giving a commitment to do this, demanding a written commitment that if they have water running off the roof or the windows or the paving stones going into the wastewater system, that they require the written agreement uh, of Irish Water for it. What is that about? I'd like the Minister to explain that. Well, I'll tell you what I think it is about. Because this is what happened in Detroit, and it's what happened in Bolivia. Uh, that, because the charges are for water out as well as water in, if people, in an effort to save their bills, the cost of water in, start to harvest water, but that water goes back into the wastewater system, they won't be rewarded for water conservation and using less of the treated water that is coming in. They will be charged for it. And the charges in Detroit were more expensive for water out than water in. So you don't get rewarded for water conservation. You get charged for water conservation. And if you do more water conservation, you'll get charged more for water conservation. And in Bolivia, Bechtel, the private company, until they were thrown out by a massive two-year-long popular revolt against the introduction of charges and the privatisation of water, but while it was privatised, Bechtel were sending inspectors around to people's homes, checking if they had water uh, harvesting equipment to harvest rainwater off the roof, and saying, OK, you're harvesting water off your roof, we see the evidence, we're charging you for it. That's what this is about. It won't happen today or tomorrow, but it's in the agreement. It is the legal basis. It gives them the legal authority to do this. And the charging system is set up in such a way as to allow for that. Water in, water out. Must have a written agreement from Irish Water for any water out that you harvest yourself from the sky. So. It's not just the treated water, it's the water from the sky that they will be charged for. It's shameful. Absolutely shameful. As if the whole thing is not a debacle and a fiasco and an injustice on a massive scale, this as well, to add to it all. And please don't give us any fake assurances, because that's what's happened everywhere else. And I've been studying the agreements. They have, you see, they have these documents. You probably cut and paste this from other international models. I'm sure you did. Because I looked at the wording of all these other private water companies in America, in other parts of the world. The wording is always the same. It's always the same. They literally cut and paste the wording. So there is a model for privatisation and charging which is being pursued by multinational corporations all over the world. And that's the Irish water model too. Regardless uh, of any assurances and promises and so on from a government whose credibility on promises is threadbare. Uh, so, Minister, yet another shocking uh, aspect of what, uh, what this is all about and another reason why people are so right to resist it.